calling the meeting to order at 7.05. Uh, Elizabeth, would you like to lead us in the in the uh, flight salute? My pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Suzanne, would you please take roll call? Trustee Villalobos. Here. Trustee Bredahl. Here. Trustee Shinikari. Here. Trustee Levin. Here. Trustee Gould. Here. Thank you. The district digitally records the audio portion of the meetings. The recorder is located in front of the board scribe. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available during that time period for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. As a community service, Pacifica Community Television records and broadcasts meetings. Uh, this meeting tonight is being held in the memory of Mr. Tom Ball and Ms. Fran Bauman. Uh, I'll read you a little bit about each of them. Tom Ball was the library manager of the Pacifica Libraries from 2005 to 2014. Tom was a great friend of the Friends of the Library and an active community member. Over the years, he guided and mentored the Pacifica Friends of the Library Board, and he worked with the Friends and the Pacifica Library Foundation and the City of Pacifica, preparing the groundwork of needs assessment and preliminary planning for a new Pacifica Library. He put in many hours of meetings and planning in this effort. He was transferred to Millbrae in 2014, but continued to take an active part in community life in his hometown of Pacifica. He worked on the library campaign and continued to take an active interest. He also volunteered with the Pacifica Resource Center and was getting ready for their big fundraiser. It was a pleasure to work with him. Tom came with many talents. In his early life, he was a musician and traveled with a band as a guitarist and singer. When he came to Pacifica, he turned that talent into a wonderful musical story time. He was also a champion of the garden at Sanchez Library and celebrated the harvest, most of which was donated to the Resource Center. Our sincere condolences go out to his family. Tom will be sorely missed. Um, on a side note, Tom was also the person that hired me at the Pacifica Libraries. <laughs> and he was quite an avid baker. So. <laughs> Uh, Fran Bauman began in the Laguna Salada Union School District, now known as Pacifica School District, in 1987 as a personal assistant and later began working in the special education area of the Student Services Department. Fran retired in 1996. Fran was a devoted mother and was very active in her children's activities and her church, including being an active member of the PTA. Fran was a very generous woman that could light up a room with her smile and her energy. Her family and her church were her life. She will be missed by all who knew her for her kind heart and commitment to everything and everyone she loved. Report out on closed session items. The board met in closed session regarding Conference with Labor Negotiator, uh, Employee Organization, CSEA, LSEA, LSMA, MA, and Public Employee Performance Evaluation Title Superintendent. Uh, no action was taken. Approval of the minutes. Anybody have any? Changes, suggestions? Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. Second? Second. All in favor? Okay. Board passes <coughs> by vote. Can I have clarification? Yes. Are we are we moving to to approve the minutes of June seventh? June seventh. Thank you. My apologies. Board passes by vote. Yes. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes of June fourteenth. Any changes? Okay, motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? 
Yours passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the agenda and consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda will be approved with one motion which is not debatable and which requires a unanimous vote for passage. If any member of the board, the superintendent, or the public so requests, any item shall be removed from this section and placed in the regular order of business following approval of the consent agenda. Okay, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Thank you. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Board passes by vote. Thank you. Thank you. Communications. This portion of the agenda is available to the public to address the board on any issue that is not on the agenda. The maximum time allowed for any speaker is three minutes. LSEA? <laughs> CSEA? <laughs> there we go again. <laughs> A little easier here. I'm more comfortable. Oh, yeah. But see, I'm here to represent CSEA and um, I really was impressed with the kickoff this year. Um, Tiffany with the uh, SEL did a fantastic job, but she also brought to us a lot of food for thought. And as she was talking, I could say, you know, I, I really think we kind of do that already, but we probably can put a little more effort into it. Um, was an excellent kickoff and going back to the site and discussing it and you know spending time talking within our own site there um, I think a lot of people feel the same way that I do so and then this morning of course was nerve-wracking for me <laughs> but um, it too was a very beneficial time spent as a whole big group but going back to your own team we're beginning to feel like we're a team which is is really what each site needs so thank you very much for all the food and the thought that went into that and let's do it again next year thank you <laughs> thank you Jerry people wishing to address the board <laughs> correspondence um, over the summer, I did receive, and I apologize because I brought the wrong communication, but the special education department is reviewed every year. And I want to say that we received 100% compliance in our IEP records, and um, that's not an easy feat, to say the least. Usually you'll find the dates out of place or something. So I really want to commend the special ed department uh, for their work. And then, of course, next week we get a, a, another review coming up. So I have uh, great respect for the special education department and staff for all of their hard work and effort to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our students. And following the letter of the law, because timelines are there to be kept, and we, we take them very seriously, and we make sure that the paperwork is in complete order. So thank you, Ray, and to the department and Thank you. Boyd Superintendent Communications. Who would like to start? Anyone? I'll start. Thank you. Much. <laughs> <laughs> it's the start of the year. <laughs> that was it? That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Very concise. Oh, boy. Um, oh, well. I got back from vacation, but before vacation, um, I attended um, uh, something called the Summit for the Future of Education Finance Research, and uh, that was in Baltimore. And it was it was interesting. It was uh, sponsored by two organizations, one of which is pretty far right leaning a bit. So uh, one had to go there and critically think about some of the presentations that were there. Um, but uh, all in all, it was it was, it was interesting, and uh, I, I learned a little here and there. But I also had my mental guard up, if that makes any sense. Uh, and other than that, I've been on vacation for three weeks, so I'm back. So I guess the only thing I've done this summer is um, we've uh, got a, a public survey 
out right now. Uh, is it still out, Wendy? Or is, or, uh, oh, for the, the feasibility yeah. study? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it closed last weekend, so okay. they're right now looking at the data. So we have to question this. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, got, got questions honed in and we'll get, this, get started working on this soon. See what we can. But, so when are they going to close it? Have they closed, they closed, they closed it? it? Okay, and so now they're just cleaning up the data. And so September 6th, we will, he will come forward to a work study mm -hmm. and share the data. Great. Uh, should I go or you want to go? You go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say there were just, uh, there were several of the geo bond meetings, as she was mentioning, for the survey and workforce housing meetings. Um, several of us attended the new teacher luncheon on Friday and um, uh, the other thing that I hadn't done before was actually a lot of fun was um, painting the kindergarten yard up at uh, Sunset Ridge and they had a painting day so repainting the hopscotch and the four square and all that so that was actually a fun morning with all the PTO up there and all the parents and grandparents and we were out there you know, sweeping, Spursing. scraping paint and <laughs> painting the little numbers back there. so that, that was actually fun I hadn't done that before Cute. very therapeutic this again. Did you see whales? I did not see any whales. Oh, oh no wrong side of campus. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, along with Elizabeth, um, attended, I don't know how many odd stat meetings and <laughs> conference calls. So it's, it's moving ahead, slowly. Um, again, the uh, new teacher welcome, and then later the luncheon at TAMS. It was really nice to see all those fresh new faces. Um, Solar eclipse. <laughs> you didn't talk about yours, but I went to the Sanchez Library, and I have to say there were over 250 people wow. in wow. that little, tiny, cramped library. Um, we didn't see the eclipse except when it was streamed um, on YouTube, but um, we didn't see it in person. Um, but people, strangely, were still coming in and asking for glasses, which I thought wow. maybe they were hoping <laughs> things were going to open up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, our kickoff to the school year this morning, as Jerry said, was really wonderful, and um, that is it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've attended um, many of those meetings and um, some professional development for our new teachers, and I think it's an exciting time. I think everyone's gotten ready, and the kids come tomorrow, so we're excited for the first day of school for all of our students. Over the summer, we did receive two wonderful donations. One we received from Recology for $10,000, and, and the intent was to pay for a van. So we were able to purchase a van at the beginning for our new fiscal year, and it is a 15 capacity seater. So it's really helped us mm -hmm. uh, because I think our other vans are only 12. Right. Yes. And it's, it is configured so that students can get in and out in a much, much easier fashion. So we were able to use the van to tour our new employees with Will being the driver and Josie being the tour guide. <coughs> it was nice for them to get to see the set that commercial license. <laughs> you, you don't need a commercial. You don't need the commercial license. That, oh, okay. that was the good news. Okay. <laughs> and then we also received a five thousand dollar donation from Building Kids to our LMEC classrooms, or classrooms at LMEC, to purchase instructional materials. So again, it's so nice, and our community um, is so supportive of us, and um, and us being able to provide program and materials and instruction. Wonderful. Okay, on to district business. Di district goals. The district values the goals provided in our local control accountability plan and strategic plan. All of our district board agenda items are tied to these goals. One or more goals are listed in the description of each board agenda item. The details for each of those district goals can be accessed on our Agenda Online public page or by visiting the district website www.pacificasd.org under District Information Board of Trustees. Educational Support Services <coughs> Update. Will? All right. Um, so, let me make this 
Uh, okay. So this is our uh, educational support service update. Um, so uh, what this update will will cover uh, the summer programs um, that we had this summer. Um, our tech summer. <coughs> uh, I'll go over some general CASP results, our latest CASP results, and then also we're going over some program and curriculum for humanities, mathematics. Uh, school climate, science, world language, and music. So, the summer work, 2000 summer program work. Um, we, I mean, sorry, the 2017 summer programs. So we had our KDK, as uh, I talked about before. It was led by Hilda Carlin. She's our, our, our early learning coordinator, early learning, uh, yeah, early learning coordinator. And just some stats from that program. We had five classes at four sites. Uh, 89 children were enrolled, 85 attended, um, 26 parents reported, uh, that we got reports from, that said that their ch child had no prior uh, preschool experience. So there was probably more, but we had 26 that reported that. Um, and we also had an Elevate Math program, which, and an A-Learn program, they were both math programs. Um, our Elevate program, uh, 69 students enrolled in uh, rising 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, in our A-Learn program, we only had a few students. I think there was two uh, from our, our site. There was only one class um, of, of A-Learn. Um, and so from our district, there was, I believe, two. I counted more than two. Oh, you did? Six or eight. Six or eight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, that makes me feel better. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the summer work, our technology summer work that we had done, 22 short throw projectors were installed throughout our district. Uh, Ocean Shore, all of Ocean Shore teachers got new laptops. Um, our website is was overhauled and is being overhauled. We haven't uh, pulled it out yet, but our website now is going to have a internet and an intranet, uh, so there'll be a, a space for uh, staff resources that staff can sign into and, and, and have resources more handily available to them on, off the web. Um, and then we also finished the new phone system, so all the remaining schools that hadn't had the new phones installed, they were all installed, Valimar, uh, Cabrillo, and Ortega. The work was done those sites. Uh, CASP results. So they have just come out. They're not public public, meaning that they haven't uh, uh, come out to the public, uh, but we <coughs> have a little sneak preview of them. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to show you is uh, um, the performance summary. So just the general summary of the district of, of, about how we did it. But we did perform better than we did last year. Our math actually improved pretty significantly. Our uh, ELA uh, maintained but improved a little bit, but maintained and it was already at a pretty uh, solid level. And uh, also the CASP result student uh, letters were sent home along with their scores to all the families. So there was a letter explaining the CASP results and, and the, their individual scores. And then also we will be utilizing a new system, DataZone. It's a warehouse where we'll be able to pull in all of our CASP results along with a lot of local assessments and be able to uh, have that data a little more readily available for principals and teachers eventually uh, to go to when they may need to look at their, their students' data. So this, this, this was uh, the results for our English language arts. And again, this was all grades. 58% of our students uh, were at uh, net standard or improved or were um, uh, exceeded the standards. And the, uh, the other piece of data I want to share is that the average distance from level three were at a plus 12 where Last year, we were at a plus 10, uh, so we improved a little bit uh, with, with that. Um, and level three is? Level three is the average, uh, the, average the average distance to level three, meaning that 
once you have an average three for the entire state of California, the where our students lie on average compared to that level three. And so level three, is that where standards <coughs> met? Standards met, yeah. Or exceeded and it's above. So it's above, yes. And then um, for math, uh, we, we improved pretty significantly. We're 54% at net standard, 54% of our students met standard or exceeded standard, while 46% uh, were close to standard but didn't meet it. And here again, the, 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 the other piece of data is that our average distance from level three is at zero, which in previous year was at a negative 11. So um, as a district, we averaged net standard uh, for the uh, district. So that was a pretty significant improvement from, from the previous year. Um, so in September 27th, we'll be have a work study and we'll go more in depth with uh, the scores and also we'll, make, we'll be making connections to the LCAP, connect, connect directly to our matrix in the LCAP. Um, and then there's obviously going to be uh, some training for the administrative administration and staff uh, to understand understanding using the SBAC uh, results. And then also once they once we have it then uh, in data zone in this data zone warehouse, how they'll be able to take a deeper dive or look more closely at particularly identify specific groups of students that they want to target. Um, and then um, they'll also be. Um, aligned with the uh, S, the SIPSES, the, the various school SIPSES. Uh, program and, and curriculum, um, we, uh, as far as professional development, we have a new teachers, readers, and writers workshop. Um, we'll have, we're going to have a new readiness tool for our kindergarten teachers, so they're going to give out a, a tool that's going to uh, give them an idea of where they're at, how ready they are for uh, kindergarten. Um, so the kindergarten teachers, once that tool is given out, that'll be very valuable data for what, what, what they need to do or how they, uh, it'll really inform what kind of teaching practices that they'll need to, uh, to, to, to look at. Um, and that's gonna be through the help of, of our Close the, uh, Close the Gap grant going to help support that um, along with uh, it's going to um, allow us to uh, look at what kind of professional developments we want for our TK pre-K classes, actually pre TK to third grade level uh, teachers. Um, and uh, so it's kind of a springboard for those types of professional development. Um, and then we're going to have lab, a PS, uh, we're going to have our lab sites at um, the three other schools we had, uh, three schools have lab sites this past year, and these are the other three schools that didn't have it last year, so they're going to have it this year, and it's a rural IBL and Ocean Shore. We're going to have a new assessment uh, system to assess uh, students' reading levels and uh, comprehension, their literacy, basically, and the Fonts Panel, uh, that Fonts Panel assessment training is going to allow teachers to have a little more um, a little more deeper understanding of how the, of the students reading um, more than what the DR, DR, DRA has done in the past. So uh, that there's going to be training, and then uh, we're there's a district wide there's going to be a focus focus PD for Sunset Ridge or Tegan IBL on our our uh, teacher college readers and writers project ELD piece, which is uh, what was adopted last year. Uh, or at our last meeting, I believe, right? So that that was adopted at our last you know, last meeting, um, and so now there's going to be some training that will be focused on that, and we're focusing on again Sunset Ridge or Take an IBL, and then LLI training, which is uh, intervention training for students who need um, more uh, targeted uh, supports in literacy. Um, there will be trainings available for teachers that, that need that as needed. Um, and then the history, social science, uh, there will be professional development uh, around that because uh, we'll be looking at a social science adoption committee which we put together because we'll be adopting a uh, social science um, uh, curriculum. This is 
kind of sit them down and roll them and see if that's going to do something. Oh, yeah, and the California um, uh, History of Social Science Framework also. Um, mathematics, we'll be continuing with Bridges training, especially for our new teachers. We've had two days of new teacher Bridges training already um, before the school year started. Um, there are going to be observation days, and we all have a consultant uh, coming in to help uh, support that, uh, those days. Allison, I, I don't know, I forget her last name, but she uh, worked with the schools last year, and she's going to continue to work with the schools this year. Our 6A teachers are going to have, um, they're going to collaborate and then also continue to work on their, on the assessment and assessment building in those years, in those grades connected to the uh, curriculum, which is the CPM curriculum. Um, and then they'll, there's uh, going to be provided Bridges intervention training for our RSP teachers. Um, uh, the, the mathematics Bridges and CPM, we've done some changes with the assessment um, of, our, of our Bridges and our CPM. The, three CPM benchmark assessments have been adjusted so that they are more of a predictor of how they're going to be doing on the CASP along with being aligned with the CPM curriculum. So there were some changes made for that. And the Bridges Numbers Quarters were looking at utilizing the five benchmark assessments, uh, not five benchmark, the five uh, number quarters assessments as benchmarks uh, for that program. Uh, and then as we've had in the past, we have online support with Mathletics and ST Math with the K-5. Social climate and social emotional learning. So as with what we did on the 22nd, which was a great kickoff to this, um, we had that uh, day-long um, professional development, um, SEL professional development, um, that uh, Jerry spoke about. Um, there's going to be a year-long uh, professional development around that. We, we do have uh, focus schools as we did last year. There was three focus schools last year on school climate and this year we have the three other schools are going to have some uh, um, professional development and that's Balamar, Sunset Ridge, and Ortega. Um, the, the Pacifica School District Social Emotional Framework um, which we had the August 22nd, we just had the introduction and the implementation, and then there's going to be implementing and planning all year long um, through the school climate committee, but also as they're a regular PD throughout the year. And then um, the social emotional learning reference guide, which would, which is the five L SEL competencies, and I think they're up there in the circle there, <laughs> five SELs, which uh, Ray has <coughs> numerous times referred to, which he's, he's talked about it. Um, but this reference guide is going to allow them to uh, support those SELs through uh, the, the standards within the different uh, subject matters, the California standards within the different subject matters. So um, that's really exciting to see that kind of come to fruition. And then in science, um, our K-5 uh, science plan are planning the realignment um, um, and where our main focus is going to be on the 4th and 5th grade um, for the NG NGSS. So there's going to be some planning and realignment time to, to, uh, to, to get our 4th and 5th graders aligned with the new standards. Um, and the 6th and 8th grade teachers are going to have their collaboration time uh, as they ha have had in the past. The 6th and 7th grade teachers are going to be implementing uh, a uh, curriculum, Science Alive curriculum, and they're going to have training around it. Now, we've had History Alive, which is by the same company, um, and it's been pretty successful in all the schools. So the Science Alive comes with a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, yeah, they get, it, it's, 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 it's structured many in the same way as the history and social science one, but it's for the science, and there's a lot of like positive things that we've heard from it. So the science committee is actually going to try this curriculum out, and then we're going to get feedback, and it's, it might be something that we might continue to uh, go with 
uh, and that's for the sixth and seventh. And the idea is that the subsequent year will go sixth, seventh, eighth. Uh, so um, that's 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 the plan. And then our our world language uh, Spanish program. So we are expanding the foreign language program to include fourth and fifth. Um, so there's going to be a K-5 program at Sunset Ridge, and the K-5 program is going to be made up of two 30-minute lessons with the teacher, and then one 30-minute lesson with the an online program, the Scrube El Espanol online program. <laughs> I probably said it completely wrong. I, didn't okay. I took Latin. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Not a spoken language. So. <laughs> yeah. Four years, too. Okay. Um, but the... Uh, but so this is kind of like the, the way they're scheduling it at Sunset Ridge is they're including it this way so that so that they, they still get there three times a week with it, but one time it's with this online program. Um, and so that's how we're expanding it um, uh, to K-5. And then our music program, uh, there's been some changes there in that uh, Mark is now the, the grade third through fifth grade program music program. <coughs> and then uh, Samantha Johns and Jerry Downs are the sixth, eighth music uh, program. Um, so um, there's some adjustment and change in, uh, changes there. Any questions? That was a lot to throw at you. <laughs> Any questions about any of it? So, so the foreign language is, I mean, it's limited to Sunset Ridge right now, yeah. right? Are, are, is there any talk at all about trying to expand this to other schools? Yeah, there's, we're hoping, our hope is to move from K-5 and then have it at the 6-8 schools so that they would continue to, to get it. They're, they're, we really haven't looked closely at moving it to other K-5 schools, okay, that was but right now it, it's our, what we're looking at is once if those fifth graders graduate, they got we want to make sure that it's available at uh, the 6-8 schools. Um, and this, if you remember, originally the plan was to have hire a .6 teacher, but because we were unsure about the funding source of it, this was uh, kind of a way we expanded the K-5 by at the same time not, um, not you know, have it affect the program itself and still have the, the time that it needs. Question. Um, on the summer programs with the Elevate Math, um, you said 69 students enrolled. Do we know if they all finished? Yeah, they enrolled and they went all the way through. Now, there were, there were some students that took like three days off in the middle of it, you know, or three or four days off in the middle of it. Um, there was absentees here and there, but for the most part, the 69 that started is the 69 that finished. That's impressive. Yeah, that is. Yeah. There um, was there was a um, apparently there was a uh, baseball little league or something baseball championship <laughs> during the middle of it, and they had to go. And, uh, they, no, it was at it was at on the weekends, but they some of them missed the Monday because they got back oh. so late that night before. And sure. Actually, one of the teachers was a parent of one of the players on the team. So. <laughs> She made it, but the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Maybe <laughs> teach um, And this is just sort of a philosophical question, and Ray might be able to help out with this question. But on the school climate, <coughs> do we do any kind of school climate at Lindemar? We, I, I know it would be more with the parents, maybe, but I'm just wondering, opening up that communication with how they're feeling about the program, we do it right now more on an individual basis, but we most definitely could form a parent group. Mm -hmm. We have a parent group that does meet, but we've never talked about school climate. Mm -hmm. um, we've addressed other issues and presented different topics, but we could definitely do this. Yeah. Just something for thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we are going to do the uh, survey, parent survey, so that will be, give mm -hmm. us good information uh, because we can disaggregate it by school. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to see how they're feeling and some of the things they might want to see. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah they're, they're, and I didn't have included in the presentation because I wasn't sure how it was going to be structured, but we, we, we were going to have a parent survey, a student survey, and a staff survey. Mm -hmm. And a component of each of those surveys is SEL. So, and that's going to be going out to 
all the screws. All sides. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I, I have a more general question about the summer programs. Are, are we doing anything to uh, uh, evaluate and look, look at, I don't want to say how effective the programs are, but look at the progress that students may or may not be making over the summer? So there is, uh, we know the 69 students that, that did it. Now, part of the Elevate program is they do come back mm -hmm. and they do check in uh, with the students, but the, I, what the idea we wanted is the students that are still in our school and possibly the ones that have graduated is to actually group them and see how they do sure. on their assessments and benchmarks throughout the year, especially in the sure. math area. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the feedback that I received from the three teachers um, was that it was a pretty solid program. They, they saw improvement of all of their students, at least from what they sure. saw. Um, um, but it, that was informal, just talking how to go. Sure. And, you know. so it'd be interesting to dig in the data, especially the, the fifth graders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, if there's they show really significant improvement, maybe try to push fifth grade enrollment in the summer programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And that might fix our the hiccup that we have. Mm -hmm. So, thanks so much. That needs to be fourth grade. Oh sure. Yeah. This year's fourth graders. Well, it, uh, fourth and yeah. do, do both. Of them. <laughs> but, uh, or do we need to follow a cohort? Well, these, these are these are these are questions. For the, the, the data will bear all. <laughs> and we'll do a deeper dive at the September twenty seventh meeting when we have all of our data. The data that we're pulling right now is preliminary because it comes through just the systems that we have, but CAS will be putting out their final data and that'll help us to, to look at cohorts to see how we can disaggregate and aggregate our data. Yeah. So, so last question, I, I, I suspect we'll be hearing more about the Social Science Committee yeah. uh, over, over the year as they yeah, start meeting. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm very excited about that. November the list comes out from CDE of the approved um, and we have been working with our at least our sixth through eighth grade teachers and now we're going to be pulling in the K-5 a K-5 representative group um, we haven't really been adopting off the uh, CDE list lately so it'll be interesting to see if they what kind of um, curriculum options we have available sure. to us sure. because as you know especially with the situation now and the, the shift that we're making with the framework it's very important that it's a balanced um, it's balanced information and approach to teaching of history social science um the what we were doing what we're doing with the science we're doing some piloting are we can is that is that the program we're um we're looking at adopting is that the six seven eight? Yeah. And it's they, looking promising. Yeah, they they reviewed a couple of different uh, choices throughout last year and they settled on 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 trying this one out and seeing how this would go you know, based on what they had seen. So um, it, it would, it, it's like it, let's see how it works. And so we we we've, we've been able to purchase of course not that much money, but you purchased this pilot program to try it out and when you don't like it, then you fully purchase the whole program. And is it just a middle school program or is that a... Uh, the, the, the Science Alive is a middle school to 6 eight program, so it, they, they don't at this point um, offer a K-5 program. Are we doing FOSS kits still for the new FOSS kits for the k <coughs> and we tried FOSS 6 through 8, but they, it wasn't um, robust enough for our, in our uh, teachers, from our teachers' perspective, so. And that, on the CAS scores, there's some funny numbers, average, average distance from level 3. Mm -hmm. Is that a measure of variation, sir? Um, the, the, <laughs> the, 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 no, no, it's, no, it, it's, it, it's, it's literally an average distance. So, so what you can see is that um, 
I mean, what it what it's saying is is that the 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 bulk of, of these guys that are above the above two are are lifting up the average. There's, there's oh, okay. More more, right. more of these, and you could see that if you if you turn if you turn these bars and make them vertical, you're going to have a distribution, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they, they get all colorful right. and sort of switch right. around, but you can kind of see that. So so the, the red would be on your left side of your district, the, the lower yeah. scores, and then the, the, the blue would be on your right-hand side. Um, so so I, I think that this is really interesting. I'd like to actually look at these pictures from last year and next to these, right? Yeah. Um, to, to see how how this distribution shifted to the right, as we say, yeah. right? Um, and, and that would be really interesting to, to do. There's some uh, strange things. Um, one thing that, that, that came out to me when I was just looking at it, and I haven't looked at this really carefully, but the concepts and procedures on the math, there, there's kind of a larger yeah. bottom end of the tail. There's 27, 28% that are you know, at the at the below standard, and then there's 36 percent. So you, you kind of got this. Um, it's less bell shaped. It's, yeah. it's more mm -hmm. spread out, and so, so I get a little worried when that ta that bottom tail gets larger like yeah. that, and, <coughs> and and especially because the other two constructs that are talking about the problem solving, the communicating, reasoning, those are more around 20 percent, and that's yeah. sort of mm -hmm. consistent. So there's something weird going on. The concepts and procedures evidently are more difficult for our lower achievers than, yeah. than these other two and, and um, it's just a little that took when I look at it I'm just like that is that right you know or it just looks strange a little bit yeah. to me so um, but you know it, it's great that we have these data and, and we're starting to get used to it and we should all realize that we're only a few years into this so the kids are yeah. still getting used to yeah. everything um, and uh, you know in the years to come I think um, the uh, the signal is going to be stronger right mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and we're going to start seeing sort of steady steady patterns. But yeah. it, it's great that we're, we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we should all be concerned about the 20 some odd percent that are level one. And that's always concerns me that we're only as good as the students that are doing the least well. So, you know, but, but it's good news that, yeah. that we haven't gone the opposite direction, yeah. right? right? So. Yeah, this this covers all grade levels, right? So yeah. it covers all the grade levels. But when you look at the 15, 16, you didn't have the eighth and you had a new third. Sure. So so your groups are a little bit different. Sure. But what you're saying about where they're coming from, yeah. that red seems to be almost pretty consistent from 15, 16 to 16, 17. Yeah. That red area is okay. about the same percentage. Okay. A lot of the ones we're moving are the ones that are at that yellow level, that standard view yeah. event. Those ones are moving. Sure. And we're moving the ones from the green to blue. So sure. that's why the math scores went up. But it's interesting how you mentioned that because there's a multi-year performance summary report, mm -hmm. and I mean I can share that with you. Sure. Well, let's talk about. It. I don't want to eat up all the time, but if you look at the distribution, you can also look at the distributions overlapped with one another yeah. to see how, and then and then you can cut it up into the four, the four pieces that document these these four categories yeah. in the distribution or the density function, right? Anyway, we we can talk about that more later. But I, I, I'm intrigued. This is this all looks great. Thank, thank you so much for, for pulling this. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. 12B, response to grand jury report. How have San Mateo <coughs> County Public Schools responded to the epinephrine auto injector law SB 1266 goal governance? Ray? Okay. So this grand jury report um, is a result of Senate Bill 1266, which became effective January 1st, 2015. And this Senate bill was around um, public schools with the use of epinephrine auto injector pens. Okay? So for 1617, the San Mateo County Grand Civil Jury was interested in how it was working in the San Mateo County schools. So the county of San Mateo, um, they wanted to see if the schools were being compliant with the requirements of the Senate bill. So um, surveys went out, a report was developed, and what resulted of that report that came out June 12th of this school year, 2017, was that most schools, for, uh, for the most part, are complying with the provisions of Senate Bill 1266. So that's the good news. Um, San Mateo County is required to submit a response um, 
to the San Mateo County Grand Jury regarding the content of the report that they put out um, back in June of 2017. So what's being required of each school district is to complete a report um, in response, which we have, and I included that report uh, with this board memo. And the San Mateo County would like for each district's board of trustees to approve that report. And once it is approved, then I can move it forward to San Mateo County to submit to the grand jury. And the report is due, I have to submit it by September 15th. So it is recommended that our board do approve the Pacific Coast School District response um, to the San Mateo grand jury report. So one comment that I just, even though I know it's um, probably would not go anywhere, but I, since we also have another grand jury report coming up, I just feel it's a little frustrating that we have to spend money because I'm assuming this was through county council um, and every school district has to do this, to do this. And quite a few of the findings <laughs> are unable to agree or disagree with this finding as it was not present during the grand jury's visit to various school sites and other districts. I realize legally we have to do this, but I do find it a bit frustrating. So I just felt I needed to voice that we are having to spend money. I understand they want to, they're on a fact finding and I can appreciate that, but every school district in San Mateo County is having to spend money, right, on this legal response. So I simply wanted to voice my frustration. <laughs> when I read this, I, I had the exact same impression that half or more than half of these points, it's like, well, we can't say one way or the other because we weren't there on your site visit, so. Right. Um, so, uh, and then the other ones were saying we've already we've complied <laughs> we've already and complied. we've spent money on this response so yeah. and did we have to get our lawyers to look at our responses yes we've spent good money on this so it's not just raise time right but we have to pay the lawyer to read the Pacific School District has already implemented this recommendation yes so anyway felt I needed to do that. Um, any other comments before? This is an action item. Oh, the responses look fine. Yes, the responses were fine. Uh, okay, this is an action item. Is there a motion to approve our response to the grand jury report on epinephrine auto injector law SB 1266? I'm going to move to approve this report. Thank you. Second? I will second. All in favor? Word past this 5 0. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. 12C, resolution number 2017-08-23-A, conflict of interest. Wendy? Okay, I bring forward to you this resolution. Mm -hmm. um, it really comes forward because we did change the titles to some of our um, uh, current administrators. So this just corrects those titles. Um, to make sure that we're current. Okay. Any comments, discussion? Okay, this is an action item. Is there a motion to approve this resolution 2017-08-23-A? Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 12 D, resolution number 2017 08 23 B for Attendance Awareness Month, LCAP goal number three. Ray? Okay. So, as we embark upon our students returning tomorrow for their first day of school, we also want to launch off for the month of September, uh, Attendance Awareness Month. Now, Attendance Awareness Month started nationwide back in the year 2013. Um, it is imperative that um, we put out an urgent concern that too many children miss too many school days during the school year. So we wanted to launch off the school year with a focus on the importance of good attendance. Um, we specifically in our dis district focus on 
chronically absent students. And this is a student that is uh, absent 10% or more of a given time frame. We usually monitor that each trimester and as a targeted group of students. Um, another thing that we do in Pacifica School District to promote regular attendance and, and focus on that is an intervention um, through an organization that's called In Class Today. And they send cards to homes of our targeted groups of students where we want to send um, a very clear message of how important attendance is for our, our children, especially kindergarten through third grade, the primary years. Uh, there's so many things are formative during that time of a child's life. Our first um, round of cards will go out mid-September uh, to a targeted group of students who are chronically absent our prior school year, so we can just sort of give a, a, a gentle message of let's start off the school year on a positive note and try to avoid being chronically absent. So that's what, just one of the interventions that our hardworking staff at each school site does um, in honor of launching off the year with um, a focus on attendance awareness month. There's many other um, incentives and activities that occur, especially throughout that month of September. So this resolution endorses attendance awareness month and it will be for September. Any questions or discussion? Um, I think the only comment I wanted to make was the end of last school year, I did have um, a staff member uh, talk to me about concerns about the end of the school year attendance and how that last um, week or so people are, you know, getting a jump on vacation and things. And um, I reminded them that in the past, I know we used to do a lot of reaching out to parents through newsletters and things, just reminding them that every day counts even though you're winding down the school year. Is that still a common practice? Because I think that helps. Yes. I mean, ironically, what was interesting when we looked at the attendance for the last week of the 16-17 school year, um, our uh, largest absenteeism was Monday and Tuesday of that week, and then, of course, Friday of that week. But we had more kids here Wednesday and Thursday. So oh. I don't know if that attributed to a long weekend, um, <coughs> getting a jump start on that vacation, but it's definitely a focus. We have what we call the learning support team. This team is um, a combination of our assistant principals, vice principals. Will and I sit on that team. And um, attendance is one of the main areas that we discuss. And um, that's going to be the hot topic when we launch off this new school year. What happens during that last week and how can we avoid it? Okay. So I had a quick question about the, the messages that are sent home. Are, are those general sort of generic messages about the importance of, of not having too many absences or are those personalized to because I, I remember, I think it was a Harvard study. Yes. I think it was Harvard study that was through San Mateo County. Yes. Is that two years ago now, or two years? Two ago. years ago now. Um, so, so those were personalized, mm -hmm. right? Where it said your your son or daughter has been. Uh, we we got one once, I, or we we got several of them, and uh, we had an absence here or there, uh, not ten percent. Um, but um, uh, so I was just wondering if if they were personalized like that, or they are. oh, they are so, okay. Um, in class today is the same organization that the Harvard oh. study used. Gotcha. So uh, we definitely followed suit and and chose them okay. to send that message. So they're very similar uh, in response to what the Harvard study did. Okay. There's, there's a lot of experimentation out there now with um, text messaging solutions. So just down the road, and mm -hmm. we feel, and it, it's thought to be, you know, uh, the Department of Education is, is funding studies right now that, that are looking at, that is a low cost solution, mm -hmm. right? Um, which might be lower cost than stamps <laughs> and set, sending these things out. So. You text message the parent every morning to get out of bed and get your kids to school? Um, well, you text message them based on certain certain triggers, right? So if, if there seems to be a problem, then it'll automatically run off of the database and then send them a personalized message that says, you know, please realize your son or daughter has, you know, missed this much school and if they hit this much, then, you know, 
just basically giving them, trying to spread the word that attendance is important and, and then personalizing it a little bit. So it's, it's sort of the equivalent, I think, of this, but I, I, it's a bit more dynamic because you can switch up the messages and, and you, can, you can tailor the messages. Um, well, and it know, seems like it would be more immediate, too. Sure. Okay, this is an action item. So is there a motion to approve resolution number 2017-08-23-B for Attendance Awareness Month? Thank you. Oh. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Board passes 5 -0. Oh, Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. 12E resolution number 2017-08. 08-23-C, declaring the result of the education parcel tax June 7, 2016. Wendy? So um, we were informed and notified by the organization that assists us in the collection of um, the parcel tax that we needed to declare our results for the June 7, 2016 um, parcel tax election, so I bring forward to you the resolution that they can then place on file um, to continue in um, collecting the parcel tax. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, is there a motion to approve? Yes. Resolution 2017-08-23C. Absolutely. Okay, second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Board passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. 12F, approval of resolution 2017-08-23D, declaring emergency and authorizing reconstruction of school facilities goal operations. Josie? Okay, as we've been retrofitting our, um, our school's uh, gas shutoff valve, seismic shutoff valve, and um, we did notice at Ocean Shore that the pipe between the shutoff valve and the school was corroding and so that was an immediate danger for our students and so we did shut off the gas as soon as we uh, determined that the pipe was corroding and um, requested bid from the contractor and repaired the work so that we could start school tomorrow and actually um, serve lunch to our students tomorrow. And so we're asking the board to declare this an emergency and pass this resolution, which would then be forward to, forwarded to the county superintendent of schools for approval. Board discussion? I'm glad we jumped on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, this is an action item. Is there a motion to approve 2017-08-23D? I'm going to move to approve that. Thanks. Thank Start you. School. Second. <laughs> All in favor? <coughs> Board passes 5-0. Thank you. 12G, provisional internship permit. Wendy? I bring forward to you this item um, uh, requesting approval of the provisional internship permit for Mr. Shaquille Ali. He is assigned to IBL as a resource specialist for English language arts. He qualifies for the provisional internship permit and will therefore, um, once he moves through uh, some of the coursework that he needs to take, will then move into an internship program for the following year. So we will continue to monitor him. Um, we did do a search on EdJoin and within our own uh, county and through the district through um, uh, transfers. And the candidates that we were able to interview, um, Mr. Ali King uh, being the number one choice. So I request that uh, his PIP be approved for this evening. And I assume he'll have additional supports through yeah. the process. Yes. And so, you know, we, we have all, he has already uh, attended all of our professional development for our English language arts, um, especially with TCRWP because it's so intricate. And then of course the special ed education department has been supporting him as well. So I think he's in good hands. So we've identified a job-alike mentor for him to work with him throughout this school year. 
And, and then is there is there any likelihood after he finishes this sort of two years of in the pre one year of pre in internship and then one year of full internship that he might come on board? He he would then be fully Probably. credentialed. Okay. Yeah. And so um, <coughs> what happens is he's <coughs> under contract, mm -hmm. but he is not able to move across the salary schedule. Mm -hmm. He's hired as right now. I think he's a temporary. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but sure. he will not be able to move into probationary status until he fulfills his um, credential, gets a full credential. And then that whole bits of program and all of that starts. But until he completes his pre-credential, um, we will provide the support for him and to help him get through his coursework because that's essentially kind of where he is right now. Mm -hmm. Did he sell that turnover? Because mm -hmm. he's I've heard very good things about him from my children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we feel very fortunate. So where is he doing his coursework? Um, I believe, is he at San I think he's at San Francisco State. State? State? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, my question before was more, you know, is there a high probability that he will stay on so that we're not we hope. helping train him up and then, you know, Ret oh, retention, he, retention. He likes it. Okay, <laughs> let's let's keep him happy. Andrea, um, I just want to, you know, voice my concern that our most vulnerable population is being served by a, a person that's not has not, doesn't have any experience as a classroom teacher, much less uh, the knowledge to serve a special education population. And I know we're between a rock and a hard place because it, you can't get special education teachers. And, you know, I, I know it, it's an issue, but these are the kids that need the best teachers, not the not the newest, not the freshest, not the well-intentioned, but really, you know, like not seasoned whatsoever, <laughs> very raw. And um, so, you know, and and um, you know, there we're. we're we're taking a chance on them because, you know, they're, um, and, and, and we take a chance as a district, too, on this kind of a teacher, you know, who, who have we put in the classroom with our most vulnerable kids? You know, but I, I don't have a solution to this problem. I, I just wish that um, we didn't have to go there. Sure. And, of course, we always look for that uh, fully credentialed teacher, but... Unfortunately, especially right now, even nationally, it's just hard to find. This was our last <coughs> unfilled position, right? Pardon me? Was this our last unfilled position? Or no, it have? was not. <coughs> no. We still have another special ed that's unfilled. Um, actually, we had a first grade. First grade. Because first grade. Of, first grade, yeah. Yeah. Because of a, a late opening. We uh -huh. thought it was contracted and didn't come through. So, and we were able to fill that. So the elementary positions for us have been a lot easier. Yes, it is difficult to find special education mm -hmm. teachers. And so we feel um, fortunate that, number one, we have a quality person who demonstrates some real strengths in working with um, students. He's done a lot of subbing throughout most of our North County areas and did um, a teaching position um, for extended school year at LMEC this summer. And so has, has really found his gift, uh, maybe in education. And so I think it's worth um, taking that opportun this, this opportunity to see if we can grow our own, so to speak, and keep them rooted in Pacifica School District. But I totally understand where you come from. Any additional discussion? Okay, this is an action item. Is there a motion to approve, it, approve the provisional internship permit? Motion to approve. Thank you. Second? All in favor? Laverne, are you oh, voting? Oh. <laughs> Four passes by zero. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's because you didn't. It, it's it's because you didn't give her an al alternate. She was waiting for the nays. <laughs> That's why I asked if she was voting. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, 12H, fourth quarter report on Williams Uniform Complaint, Goal Operations. Josie? Okay, this is an information item for the board and for the fourth quarter of 2016-17, um, I'm happy to report there were no complaints in textbooks and instructional materials, teacher vacancy or misassignment or the condition of our facilities. Great. Thank you. 12I, report interest earned fourth quarter 2016-2017, LCAP goal, operations. Josie? Okay, another um, year-end 2016-17 uh, report for the board just reflects the interest earned for the fourth quarter and year-to-date based on each fund's earnings. The interest rate was still a little bit on the low side for the fourth quarter, 1.07% in the county treasury board. And can you um, remind me again what the tax override fund 53 is? That is a fund that we, I, we actually don't um, ever bring reports to you because that's the fund that the county uses for the bond proceeds and it's kind of a pass-through account. Okay. So when we prepare the budget and the interim reports, we, we don't have that fund to report to you. Okay. Thank it's you. A, it, it's held at the county, at the county level. Thank you. Any other comment or discussion? Okay, thank you. 12J, nominations for CSBA's legislation, legislative awards program. Wendy? So um, this item is brought forward to you to determine whether there is a legislator that you would like to nominate for one of the various um, recognitions from CSBA. Uh, there's outstanding legislator, outstanding freshman legislator, special recognition, um, Albert S. Rada Lifetime Achievement Award, and the D.B. Albert uh, Award for Exemplary Education Leadership. Uh, we would need to have a nominee tonight, and then um, hopefully the person who nominates will work with us to fill out the form so that we can take it forward, because uh, it's due, I think, like September 1st prior to our next meeting. Does anyone have any nominations? Kevin Mullins been very supportive of the school district. So Kevin Mullins been very supportive of the school district. So consider. I think Jerry Hilda with this last year. So are you nominating him or are you yes. suggesting? Yeah. You're sugge you're nominating for which one? The legislature. So the legislator okay. So the yeah, outstanding so, legislator. Mm-hmm. You can see if other people feel the same way. discussion on this? Well, I know that you've been working with me a lot on the workforce calls and who's been very supportive of the workforce calls. I'm not sure how much time he's put in. I'm not, I, I, I agree that he's been very supportive. I frankly would like to see our legislators being a whole lot more supportive of <laughs> education before I really feel like anyone deserves a um, nomination, but that might just be cranky me. Do we have to nominate? No, we do not have to nominate. We can nominate. This is your opportunity to nominate. <clears throat> How's everyone feeling? Do we do we want to discuss? Do we want to take a vote on Kevin? What would you like to do? Uh, there was Jerry Hill too, but when we were um, in Sacramento, I kind of felt like he had bigger things on his plate than a school board, you know, school district. So. 
So they all meet the um, uh, number one criteria, which is they're a member of the California State Legislature. <laughs> but number two says they need to demonstrate significant commitment and legislative contributions to public education. Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that des does that describe either one of these men? We don't need to nominate anyone. No, if you want to nominate him, we can take no, a vote okay. on it. Yeah. I, I'm not <laughs> arguing that point. I'm just wondering. <laughs> we don't have to nominate anyone. If How's ever, I mean, as you just read that, I'm, there's no one that's, to me, demonstrated. Um, you know, we're still struggling with the same things. The same things. <laughs> and there's a lot of talk. But we're still struggling with the same things. So, what would you like to do? Do you want to take a vote on Kevin, or do you want to pull, pass on it. No. pull his name? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is everyone okay with this? Well, if he watches the TV, he'll know that he was <laughs> still. I stand by wrong. my words. <laughs> he can prove me wrong. <laughs> Or any of them. <laughs> All of them can prove me wrong. <laughs> and I, I really want to to just reflect that it's not that I think Kevin and Jerry Hill both have been uh, very support very supportive in some ways for mm -hmm. all of us within our county and so we do appreciate that. But I think what the discussion is the outstanding legislator mm -hmm. and especially at a time when our funding is less than adequate and we just continue to get piled on more and more things that we need to take care of from a district level. It, it seems that our, our legislators that on a whole need to really rethink how they are supporting public education in the state of California. You know, we're still at the bottom third or fourth of the nation. It's it's quite sad. This is an action item, but no action. No action. No action. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 12K nominations for CSBA director at large. Wendy. So I bring forward this forward to you to as uh, something to think about to. Direct, to give me direction as to whether to bring this forward um, to nominate for directors at large in African American, American Indian, and the county. We do not do the county because we're not the county school board, but we could do directors at large African American and American Indian. So you're looking for nominations of someone? Any thoughts? So I will not bring this forward next. I think that is right. Okay. Thank you. Twelve uh -huh. L City of Pacifica 60th anniversary of incorporation. Wendy. So I did receive a communication from Mike Perez. Um, I think it's an exciting time for the City of Pacifica. Uh, and so I just needed direction if the board would like us to move forward and be a participant in the activities. Uh, they will have a city open house on Saturday, November 18th. So I'm thinking that might be a, um, you know, a booth of some sort for Pacifica School District, something to that nature. Um, the letter is all I've received and, and then the, that was the big question for me. What 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 does participation? <laughs> I I don't know yet. Yeah. So it could be as little as we want or as much as we want. So <clears throat> but it's exciting. I mean, yeah. I think it's mm -hmm. you know I think that the the district is a very integral part of the community, and yeah. it, we'd probably be remiss not to participate. That's my two cents. Okay. So shall I go ahead and put us in? <laughs> and sure. then, I, and I did yes. send it to Pacifica School Volunteers. I sent it to um, 
AAUW, which is the University Women's Association I belong to, that does Tech Trek every year. So hopefully we'll see a lot of a lot of our groups uh, participate. Thank you. Great. 12M, Pacifica School District Board of Education meeting, date change, uh, governance, Wendy? Okay, so I bring forward to you this item. Um, usually we do our budget and our, um, our LCAP update um, later in October, and we do have the information now, so we think that we can generate the, ge the information is coming a lot faster than it used to. And there is a conflict on October 18th with one of our board members. So we're hoping that we could change the board work study from October 18th to September 27th. And that is a Wednesday. Okay. Getting to my calendar. Okay. <laughs> no rush, no rush. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is it six o'clock? Yes, six it'll be six o'clock. It'll be a work study. It's okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, is there a motion to approve the change in the date to September 27th for our work study? Okay, second? Second. All in favor? Board passes 5 0. Thank you. So. 12N, <laughs> Pacifica School District Board of Education Trustees School Assignment 2017-2018, Wendy. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I had a brother. That's it. Okay. So this is where um, we do assign trustees to specific schools just so that we know that representation will be there. Probably a school that maybe it's not you are not mo more familiar with. Um, and it doesn't mean that other trustees can't go to that particular event, but at least it assures that we are out and about. Because sometimes, for example, like back to school night, they're all on the same night because they really, you know, have get this one event done early in the year for the families. And so we appreciate the trustees' understanding that sometimes there are going to be complex. So. Right now, we have, do you want me to say all the, where you all are? Yeah. We know no. where we are, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, I, it would be okay if I can keep LNC mm -hmm. and maybe, um, you can have two. Oh, okay. so, mm -hmm. Sorry. I just feel like I haven't fully immersed myself. Okay, I think I have more time this um, And if Kath is let me, Ortega. You're <laughs> always taking my <laughs> schools, Laverne. <laughs> no, I have to give up Ortega. I've had it for two years. Okay. You may have the Otter Town. <laughs> okay, so is that okay with everyone? Laverne at Ortega. Okay. And Alamisi. I would like to take Ocean Shore this year. Oh. Okay. Jesse, is that, a is that all right? fine. I, I mean, I, I have the same sentiment as, as, as Laverne that I don't feel like I made the full, the absolute connection. But, but I'm easy. I've got, I got three more years. Well, two more years after this. So yeah, that's I, true. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that leaves IBL open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Totally easy with whatever. Um, I'll do IBL. Okay. And then Andrea, you're at Cabrillo, right? Now. You're right. I'm giving up Cabrillo, so okay. <coughs> well, I can kind of like auction it off. <laughs> <laughs> so, question: Would that be a little strange for me, considering I have two kids there? No. No. no? Okay. I just. I, it makes I just, it easy. Yeah. 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 Okay. You have to be okay. right. You have to be definitely anyway. Do you have anybody graduating as a thing? No. Oh. Quite the. Quite, quite the opposite. 
Yeah. Just yeah. starting. Yeah. You get young, yeah. young ones. Would you like the pillow? Sure. Okay. I'm open. I can, okay. I can change or not change. Okay. Or, yeah. Elizabeth, <laughs> so Elizabeth is at uh, Sunset Ridge and Valamar is now open. I've done Valamar. Hmm? I've done Valamar. Anybody not so, done Valamar? Okay, so you so Jesse will be Valamar, that's so you'll have two school. Okay. And then Elizabeth, would you stay at Sunset Ridge or do I can you? I can do either. I can okay. either stay or Go. She's retired. I've, here were two schools. I spent 15 years at Cabrillo, so I don't know that I. Need to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need another it. one. I waited on her to shore. <laughs> Are you on a tour? Now, how long have you been, have you been at Sunset Ridge for two years? Yes. Yeah. So Is I that can a, eat. Sure. I, and to stay for mm -hmm. 30 years? Is that all right well, with everyone? Whatever you want. If you wanted to trade Valamar for Sunset Ridge, I'm happy to take Sunset Ridge. Just so that you just have so you can switch it up. Okay. Want to do that? Sure. Okay. Am I stuck on the thing? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. So Jesse be will be next. Sunset Ridge, and Valamar will Doesn't be preclude you. the doll. <laughs> okay. Where are you? So Sean, let sure. me just okay. do one call out so yes. Suzanne could get it. Ocean Shore is Kathy Shiokari. Mm -hmm. Cabrillo is Jesse Levin. Ortega is uh, Laverne Via Lobos. Valimar is Elizabeth Vidal. IBL is Andrea Gold. Sunset Ridge is Jesse Levin. And Alamisi is Laverne Via Lobos. Okay? Thank you. And that starts now. That starts now. <laughs> okay. It's tomorrow. It starts tomorrow. Because we've, <laughs> <Midnight. laughs> we've got. We have back, to back to school, school night coming up, yeah, so everybody check the, your schedule. They're all on the same night. Yes. <laughs> okay, board bylaws, board policies, and administrative regs. I'm going to do um, our usual of just going down, and so if anyone has a question, comment, um, call out. Uh, e9270, conflict of interest. Oh. We don't have to. Oh, that's an information actually. Do you know? No, no, that should be. An it answer. says information <coughs> discussion. Right. So that'll be the first. Reading, okay. And then we'll go to second reading next time. Okay. Okay. May 2017 manual maintenance 1000, 2000, 4000, 9000 series. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, BP 13123 uniform complaint. AR 13123 uniform complaint. That's attachment C, attachment D, BP 1340 access to district records. BP 4127 temporary athletic team coaches. BP 4227 temporary athletic coaches. BP 4327 temporary athletic team coaches. AR 4127 temporary athletic team coaches. AR 4227 temporary athletic coaches. AR 4327 temporary athletic coaches. BP 2121 superintendent's contract. BP 4312 Point one administrative and supervisory personnel. BP nine zero one two board member electronic communications. Okay, manual maintenance three thousand seven thousand series. AR three five five one payments for meals. AR three five five one payments for meals. BP 3551 Food Service Operations. BP 3551 Food Service Operations. AR 3580 District Records. AR 3580 District Records. BP 7214 General Obligation Bonds. Okay, BP 7214 General Obligation Bonds. May 2017 manual maintenance 5000 series. 
AR 5145.3 non discrimination harassment. Manual maintenance 6000 series. BP 6142.93 science instruction. Do I need to repeat that when it's. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, BP 6145 extracurricular and co curricular activities. AR 6145.2 athletic competition. Okay, future agenda items. Okay, um, I don't see any addition for the um, future agenda items, but maybe we can then fill in, and you might want to take a look at on the back side, or on the yeah, on the back side when the back to school. Our schedule, so our, our, our take is on 8.30, Cabrillo is 8.31, Sunset Ridge is 8.31, Valamar is 8.31, Ocean Shore is 9.7, Back to School Night for IBL is 9.7, and LMEC is 9.14, and then they have the times listed. So LMEC will be at 5 o'clock, Ray, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I can't make the CIBL back to school night. Okay. I have my own obligation in there. But you want to go to IBL, so it's the same night as Ocean Shore. Yeah. Let me, uh, hold on, let me just check my calendar. You'll go? Yeah. Okay. okay. Laverne will, will cover oh. IBLs. Okay. Thank you, Laverne. Okay. Okay. Then if there's nothing further. Okay, we are adjourned at 831.